As you recall in an earlier training video on animation, when you apply animation to text boxes, shapes, or objects, you won't be able to see that on the slide unless you're in the animations view or the, on the animations tab. Oh sure, you can come over here in the thumbnail preview and when you see a star, remember that's not just about animation, it could be a slide transition or both. So we can't really, by looking at this star, saying, oh, that's just for the animation. It could be, like I said, a slide transition. So on the Home tab, I don't see anything that's animated or tagged with animation. But when I go to the Animations tab, oh, there we go. One, two, three, four. Number one for Revenue Trends is the Fly-In. Number two is the Fade. Number three is the Floaty. And number four is the Font Color. So in this training video, I want to show you some advanced animation, and as such, we're in the advanced animation group, and we're going to do some through the animation pane. Click on it, it opens up the task pane, more specifically the animation pane, and it has a list of all the animations that you see over here, numbered sequentially as well. Again, 1, 2, 3, 4, revenue trend, revenue trends, sales up in October, and so on. And in fact, when you hover over them, you can see the activation for that animation, and the pop-up is going to be on click. Well, it also says it up here that it's going to be on click with it selected. So you don't have to wait to hover over it if you want to go ahead and just either select it here or select it by tagging by one of these animation tags. It says it up there it's an on click. But what I'm saying is that you can hover over it. It's activated by on click. You can see in the pop up. It's an entrance animation and it's going to be fly in. And then it gives you the text because, well, it's cut off revenue trend. But in the pop up, it's revenue trends. So you can go ahead and hover over each one of those to get a little bit more information about it. Now, in addition to that, well, we've got them numbered 1, 2, 3, 4. They have the reordering options. So if I want to take number 3, and you can see when I select it, it highlights it over here, the bullet point, GH stocks up 35%, and have that be the second animation instead of the third. Then with it selected, I can click up and look how it reorders it. So we'll go Revenue Trends, then I'll skip this one because now that's number three, and go to number two here, GH Stocks are up, and then go to number three, and then number four. You want to see it? Alrighty. Let's come up here on the Animations tab in the Preview group and click on Preview. So it goes one, two, then three, and then four. Out of sequence, but not according to the way we had it set here. In any case, I don't like that. I'm going to go ahead and undo that. Or, better yet, let's take the Ghost Hunter Stocks up and bump it down one to have it ordered at least the way that I wanted it one two three four so you can reorder in there and then the next thing is that you can right click on one and you get some options now you get the start on click as opposed to start with previous or start after previous which is available also up here on click with previous after previous I want to show you there's more than one way to do this so if you right click on this what start with previous means, it doesn't work for the first one because, well, what's the previous? There's nothing above it. So if I go down to number two and I right click, I can say instead of starting on click, so each one of these to get through the animation when I'm giving my presentation won't animate till I click, 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 four clicks to get through them. But if the second animation, I want to be able to not do it on click, but to start with the previous animation, select it, and the timeline keeps it in a start to start relationship. So when this one starts, start that one. So let's go ahead and select it. And when I click on it, you can see over here, it's one, one. They're both number one. And so there's nobody that comes after. They start together at the same time. Click on preview and they both start. Then comes in number two and then number three. All right. So that's what it means to, let me right click, start with the previous or now watch what happens when I do after previous. It's going to take this little timeline here and bump it over. Start after previous, it bumps it over. So it'll play this one first, then right after that, without me having to click on the screen to go to this animation, it'll just automatically play it. And in fact, you see how I hover over it? The total duration of that animation effect is a half a second. Well, you can see it up there, a half a second, so you can get a little bit more detail there. And you can click and drag that, move that out, the start time, which is interesting because we haven't talked about that yet, but it's I'm actually delaying it by moving it out. It won't start right after it, but it's going to be delayed. I don't want to do that. You can see up here it's delaying it a half a second, but hey, just learned something new, didn't we? Oh, in any case, speaking of which, you have move earlier, move later. It's the same here, move earlier, move later, but let me undo that. 
So let's go ahead and see what it looks like. Let's do previews. So it does this one first right after it. I don't have to click because it starts right after it and then it continues through the rest. Well, you wouldn't see it here because this one's automated. But I'd have to start my slideshow, click on it, and then click once, and then it goes through the first one, then the second one right after it, and then the other two will only be activated if I click and then click. Okay, let's hit the escape key. And I'm going to right click and say, let's go back to on click. So they're in sequence here, only activated by me clicking the mouse. And let's go down here. Let me go to this one right here and right click on that and continue. Next, you have the effect options. Now, for this one, it's the font color. I do have effect options, but when I click on it, I just get color. But you want to see something cooler? Well, this is more advanced. When you right click on it and you go to effect options, Oh, sure, you get the color here, just as you saw up here. Well, can't click on it, but you know what I mean. Click on it, get the colors. When you click on this, okay, you got to select more colors than what you see here. These are the most recent colors. When you select more colors, hey, it opens up your world of color here, including honeycomb colors. Let's do something green, and then click okie dokie. And you could end right there, but hey, we got a lot more. This is advanced animation. You can change and go to a different style. Now, what this means when I choose that style, is that it will go from white and go through these different colors to get to green. Now, wouldn't that look cool? Oh, I think it would. And then you got the option for a smooth start, and the total duration of the animation here is two seconds. Well, you can see it right there, too. So the most that I can give it a smooth start is two seconds. And so what's going to happen is that it'll start slowly through this up until two seconds, then pop, it'll go to green. Or if I go to one second, well, I can use the spin dial to get a little bit more particular or you can type it in there, that it will start in as smooth as it can, slow, and then it'll jump right, because it's only got a second right into the color here. So we can go ahead and play with that as far as getting into the effect here. And then you can reverse that. What it does, instead of going from white to green, it flips this, and it goes from green through these colors to white. I'm going to uncheck that. Um, the sound, hey, if you want somebody to applaud for you, click on the speaker, make sure it's up way loud. So you can really feel good about yourself like I do when I get a good applause. And I'm going to go ahead and set, well, let's play it through right now. Let's go ahead and click okie dokie. And then instead of, you know, previewing this and going through all the animations, I just want to go over the one that I've made changes to. So if I go ahead and with it selected, click on play from, it plays from the one I have selected. So if it's, you know, animation three, it'll play from that and continue down to the next one. Click play from. And there we go. Isn't that fun? Played all the way through it. And if you notice down below, it plays the timeline. It starts at zero seconds as it plays through. Watch this. When I go ahead and click play from, see how it goes through that? Two seconds. So it goes from one, starts back to zero, plays the next one. Then it goes through its cycle here up to two seconds because that's, well, this one is how long? A second. You can also click on it and zoom out. And as you go out, because if they're really super long, like 10 seconds, 30 seconds, well, or you can zoom in if they're super short. There you go. Keep zooming in so it looks longer than it actually, well, really is, as far as my opinion goes, with just a second view. I'm going to zoom out and try to get back to the way it was. But you can play with that. In any case, like I said, you can see the different effects there. Let's go ahead, instead of right-clicking, get to the effect options. You can also double click really fast and you get the effect tab here. And we got the smooth start. Let me go back to zero. And I'm going to go back to no applause. No, seriously, it's all I can do to keep myself from being distracted here with that loud applause. And then you got after animation. Don't dim as the default. You can say after animation, let's have it this color, that color, more colors. Hide after animation. Now, the reason why you may want to do that is because if you have something that you want to flash up for them to focus on, but then to pull away the focus because maybe it's too distracting and you want to talk more about it, or perhaps maybe it's a quiz, hey, what did you see? You can hide it after the animation, or you can hide on the next mouse click. So after you click, it'll hide it, and you can talk about other things just to get it off the screen so they're not focused on the, what is it? Increase paranormal activity over C. Well, increased paranormal activity just about freaks anybody out. So we'll just quickly introduce it and then let's do this. Let's say hide after the animation. And then let me do this that since we're here, 
You can have the animate text all at once, or how about if we do it word by word with a 10 second delay between words? Well, that just means that it'll start creeping. It'll go through this and you'll see it creep across. And I say creep because it does look cool and spooky. Across each word here as it transitions through these colors. So we want to focus on two things. One is that it will creep across word by word when I play it. And then when it's done, it'll hide it. So let's go ahead and click Okie Dokie. Of course, it won't do it in the design view because, you know, when I click preview here, or let's go from number three on, and then see how it creeps across. Ooh, that's pretty cool. And then it hides it. Well, it's got to bring it back because I'm in the design view. I mean, if it doesn't bring it back, then what the fudge? How am I ever going to fix it or make changes to it? So to really test this out, we got to go ahead and go to the slideshow and then click to advance through it. Two, three. Here we go. The spooky effect. Oh, isn't that just fun? And then it disappears. And then when I click on the mouse again, just advance right to the next slide. Doesn't bring it back up. So it hides it after animation hit the escape key. Now it's not just for text boxes, but you can apply pretty much everything that I told you here to also shapes and objects that when the ghost is done floating around, he can disappear. So let's go ahead and come over here and well, double click on it. And let's not hide after animation. The default is don't dim. And then while we're here, we can go ahead and click on the timing tab. So let me click okie dokie and show you that when you right click, there's the timing. So it opens up the same window, effect options and timing, just two different tabs. So, you know, click on timing or double click and go to the timing tab. So again, you can start on click, which you can do with the right click to do it on click with previous or after previous or up here on click with previous after previous. It's your flavor, whatever, which way you want to do it. It's there, different ways to do it, to get to it. You can delay it after you click on it, like let's say five seconds, maybe to give you enough time to run to the back of the room, put on a ghost sheet with a flashlight and jump in everybody's faces, spooking them, showing them that they really need somebody to protect them, some ghost hunters. In any case, whatever the purpose of the delay is, you can do it after you click on it for five seconds or with the previous one. So it'll start at the same time, a start to start relationship with the previous one. But after it starts, you can say, well, delay five seconds. That way you don't have to click on it where, you know, you'd have to click on it and then delay it five seconds, you know, kind of like a setting a time bomb, push the button and then run. In any case, you may not want to have a presentation that you do that to because I just imagine if you're giving a presentation on how revenue went down, you click on it, give you five seconds to get out of the room before the, the VP start chasing you down. And then after previous, of course, you can delay it up to a few seconds. I'm going to go back to on click. And then the duration, well, you can see right here is two seconds. But for this animation, this effect, you can go to one second or very fast. This is the benchmark. It considers very fast a half a second, which you know, I agree. And you can repeat it to either two times the animation, three, four, or until the cows come home. Well, until next click or the end of the slide. And yeah, I won't do that. I won't repeat it. We'll say none. You can rewind it when it's done playing, so it goes back to the beginning. And then next, triggers. The default is animate as part of a click sequence. Well, there's the sequence, one, two, three, four. So click that one first, then click that one second, third, and fourth. Or you can say that, take it out of the sequence. Instead, start the effect on the click of, and it will choose objects or shapes within the slide. Like the title of the slide is Ghost Hunting Revenue. Well, there it is. I'll click and drag that, Ghost Hunting Revenue. So what it does, it actually turns it into a hyperlink that when you're giving the presentation, when it gets to number four, if you don't come up here and click on that trigger point, what will be a hyperlink, and you just click somewhere off, after it's done with number three, it'll go to the next slide. You want to see? Yeah, alrighty. Let's go ahead and click okie dokie. And oh, you can see right there, there's the trigger point. It's got a lightning bolt. That means that, hey, it's not part of a sequence. It's out of sequence. And there's somewhere, something on the slide that triggers that effect. And you can see up here on the animations tab in the advanced animation group, you got trigger there on click of the title. So if you need a quick reminder of, hey, what do I need to do to activate this to trigger it? It's on the title right there. Click off. Let's begin the slideshow. Click, 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 click. Oh, you see? Let me hit the P for previous. It didn't activate this or start the animation, right? Because up here, when you hover over the title, you see the finger? I got the finger. It's pointing right at it, just like a hyperlink when you click on it. There it goes. It activates it. Oh, that's nice. So that's the trigger point. That's what triggers are. 
So why would you want to do that? Well, when you give your presentation for some audiences, maybe you don't want to give them some animation. And maybe it's just for certain audiences. So that way you can just go ahead and click through and not think anything of it. And then if you really want something and you got time for it and you want to show them some GWiz effects, you can just come up here and say, well, let me go ahead and go out of sequence, click on it, continue on with that animation effect. Otherwise, just bypass it. Maybe you're running out of time and you got 20 animations and you know, you're not sure if you're going to make it through them all. So you got these other triggers that you can click on to activate that. Let's go ahead and hit the escape key. And to get rid of it, well, you can just come up here to on-click and deselect. And instead of a trigger down below, it joins the rest of the group in sequence. And let's come over here and right-click. You can hide the timeline here. If you just want to focus without the timeline, well, there you go. Right-click and show the advanced timeline. Then if you want to add additional animation, like let's say to this bullet point, well, for that animation is applied to this one. So if I click and drag within the text box, you can see it's highlighted. So to add additional animation to that with it selected, instead of coming up here in the animation and clicking on something else, that's just going to change it. You have to come over here to the advanced animation and add some more. So how about if we do a bounce? And there you go. And in fact, to make it more fluid, instead of just clicking from, well, what's number four? The font color to the bounce after. How about if we just say right click on it, say after you're done with the color, let's go ahead and do the bounce. So start after. And then let's select number four. And you can see that number five has been removed because it's going to start with number four, with it meaning that in this case, after four has been played without me having to use the mouse to click to go ahead and activate that animation. So with it selected, go ahead and click play from. There's number four, plays it, and then after it's done, it bounces. Oh, isn't that fun? Well, let me change this one because I think this one, it's not a good entrance effects because we have it and then it comes from the entrance and continues. How about after it's done with the color from this point, then it exits out. So you can play with this. So we've got that one selected. Make sure I got the right one selected. And it's the bounce. We want to change that. So this is where we're not adding animation. We're just changing the second animation to the same bullet point. And say when it's done on exit, we want it to go ahead and bounce out. So when it's done coloring, instead of bouncing in, let's have it stay where it's at, then bounce out. All right, let's go ahead and see it. Select this one, play from, colors, and then from its current position, bounce out. Okay, that looks better to me. And you can add more animation. Just keep on clicking add, 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 add. And then to get rid of animation, well, you can't come over here and select it to get like number five if you want to get rid of it because it's stacked. So you have to come over here in the animation pane that if you close out, uh-oh, well, you know how to bring it back up. Come up here to advanced animation, click on animation pane, Select the one that you want to remove and right click on it and remove and we're back to one, two, three, four. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel to get notified of the latest videos. And for great specials on my products, please see the description below this video.